Hey guys, how you doing today? It's me, Kelly. And today I'm doing a requested video. And what it is, is a lot of you are asking what else you can do rather than um, odd girl quilts or, you know, art quilts in um, where you add, because a lot of you don't uh, draw faces and whatnot or are not comfortable and you want to be able to do something like this, but not, um, you know, with a, a doll on it. So I'm going to show you something fun um, that you can do and you can do it in so many different ways. Now, this is one of the quilts I'm working on and it is, um, let me just move this back real quick. It is obviously a kind of like art doll Dorothy um, with poppies and you know the yellow brick road and stuff like that and I'm working on her um and like I said so I get that some people don't want to do that kind of thing and I get it so what about this which I love this I'm so excited I'm using a stencil and this can be you can see this is the bird stencil and I had it go this way um and all you do pick a stencil that you have that you like it doesn't have to be a bird it could be a mandala it could be circles it could be absolutely anything you do not have to have i mean it could be so something you know as simple as this you don't have to have something uh major it's to fun to play with you know you have fabric it can be an old t-shirt it could be an old sheet that you cut up it doesn't matter the point is is that you're having fun so this is the stencil and i laid it this way and all i did was traced it with uh, my thing's blowing out. All I did was trace it with marker or pen, whatever you have. And after I did that, I have this on just regular fabric. I don't have it backed. You definitely can back it if you want with um, felt or with, uh, you know, anything, anything that you want. Right now, I'm just leaving it on this and I'm using a like mixed media uh, pad of paper or whatever, just to kind of keep it a little flat and that, you know, I can paint on it without a problem. Sometimes I like to tuck it underneath just so it stays, doesn't matter. I used my um, gesso, use, you know, whatever you have. I have recipes on how to make your own gesso for those of you who do not, excuse my arm, have any or cannot afford it because I know a lot of you out there can't. And that's okay. There's ways to be about it, go about it. And if you don't have gesso, it doesn't mean that you can't do this. This is just for me to give, get a little bit more color. So I'm just taking my gesso, as you can see, and I'm just going to paint this in. And I'm not worrying about being on point because it's nature and nature is not perfect. And you can see, and I'm just going to run this up. And that is it. And I did all that already. So these are dry. Now, these are new from Folk Art. They're called Color Shift, and look how gorgeous. You can just see without it being in the bottle, out of the bottle yet. It's, oh, it's so nice. So I'm going to shake this, and I'm going to put this on the bird because I just want to see what it's like. Um, but, of course, you paint whatever you have. If you only have black, do black. It doesn't matter. This is not about you know, always doing exactly what you see on videos or in magazines or books. It's about using what you have and being creative. And you have to remember that. Don't beat yourselves up and don't, excuse my arm. I'm going to change all this this weekend. So I, I'm not reaching over everything, but yeah, no. So it's not about, you know, going, oh, I don't have color uh, shift. I can't do this. You use whatever color you want. And this is like green gold and it's absolutely... Let me see what the color is, if I can read. Yeah, green flash. Oh, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous. And all you'll do is paint it in. Now, as you can see, I have leaves. So maybe you don't want to do the bird this color. Maybe you want to do the leaves this color instead. Or maybe you want to be very traditional because I know a lot of people like the tradition, uh, the traditional, you know, look. I like odd, freaky things as well as traditional. It depends on my mood. But I love this paint, so. And I'm just going to paint it in and not worry about changing brushes or anything like that at the moment. 
Um, you could do different color greens, right? You could do this. You could do green underneath and then put this on top. Doesn't matter. Look at that. Okay. Now, look, I have this. Now, maybe I say to myself, oh, you know what? I'm not digging. I don't want to have the bird the same color as the leaf. So I'm going to rinse my brush off, right? I'm going to take it in here while this is still a little wet. Now, I know the gesso is going to suck some of this in. So I know it's not all going to be lifted. But if I take a paper towel and dab and dab and dab, Shout out to Angie. Okay, now wait. I'm just dabbing it up. Now you can always do more, you know, if you want to put more water, rinse your brush and kind of just give it a little. Acrylic paint is so forgiving. And I'm just doing that. And I love showing this because sometimes you do go use a color and you might not like it. And it could be for hair. It could be on a mixed media piece. Um, it could be for whatever, whatever you're using. And I show this, I've shown this a million times, but I just want to show it again. All right. So look at that. So the bulk of it is up. So then I'll take my paintbrush, rinse it off, dry it, set it here. And let me pick a different color for the moment. I'm going to move this out the way because you know, I will be, uh, I will be uh, spilling that. Mm, huh. Which one should I use? Uh, orange flash and red flash. Hmm, we could use both, but I'm not, I think I'm going to go with red. Oh, I also have purple. Why not be fancy? Why, why go with the uh, norm? Let's be flashy and do purple flash. Is that what it is? Yep, purple flash. I'm finally catching on with the names. <laughs> I'm going to give this a quick shake. And shake it, shake it, shake it. And then open it. And I always like to take paint from the cap. You see that little bit? Oh, look at that. Oh, 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 oh. And then you can see here, it's dark purple. And oh, yes. Yes. All right. I'm going in. So I'm going to dry my brush. I'm going in. Now I'm going to go over the bird. Look at that. So see, if you make a little mistake, I know a lot of people write me and, and you, even with drawing, even with drawing, um, girls, right. And I do odd girls because obviously there's no rules, whatever way it comes out, it comes out and you just embrace it. That's the whole thing. It's about having fun and being creative. But, um, you know, a lot of people get nervous picking colors for mixed media, which to me, it's strange because to me, a white canvas doesn't scare me much anymore um, because it's mixed media. You just throw stuff down. Uh, but a lot of people, the freedom of that really scares them a little bit. But there's no mistakes. There's no mistakes. And you can cover up anything. But like I said, it's so easy just to add a little bit of water, which we all have. Um, and if, you ha if you're like me, you have water sitting here that you're drinking. And sometimes you accidentally put your paintbrush in it. Um, but yeah, so you can definitely, uh, just take it off and you can definitely get a smaller brush, um, to get into the crevices and all. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And I am going to probably paint, paint or draw around this or so. I haven't quite decided yet what I'm doing. But let me just do this tail and I would probably put two coats on here, but do you see how the gesso helps? And I'll show you what it would look like uh, if I don't have gesso down, just so you can be aware. Okay. And you would take a minute, you know, longer to paint. I'm just trying not to make a six hour video. I do want to start doing live, uh, live shows, live streams. Okay. All right. So if you don't go all the way to the lines, it's no big deal. Now the pen I used here is a, uh, water 
soluble one. And what that means is it's used in quilting for if you look at that shine, which is um, what I use in quilting for if I'm drawing a quilting uh, motif or something to that effect. And then you can just spray it with some water or if you wash it or whatever, it comes out. Um, but because I painted some gesso one and it's not going to come off all the way and I don't care because I'll sew or do whatever. So like I said, let's let this dry for a second. It is gorgeous. You can see the way the light is on that. Oh, oh, it's everything. Okay, so I'm going to lay this. Where am I going to lay it? Oh, let's just lay it here, Cal. And then I'm going to grab. Let me see this one. Are you going to work for me, Greeny? And then we can go in with more green and we can take it up. You know, and these are the feet. So we'll do that if we're not going to do those green. I had to catch myself for a second. You saw me almost go in there. And just think if you do, you know, a mandala or use uh, letters, maybe you have stencils with letters and you want to put a cool quote or your name to hang, you know, how they do. Um, oh, gosh, so much, so much, so much. So much fun. I could sit here for hours, but I think you catch my drift. Now, I'll just do this because this is like coloring to me. It's so relaxing. You don't have to think. You you know, you draw it out and it's all there. And it's going to be gorgeous. Now, okay, so I, I will stop doing that so I can <laughs> go on to my next thing because I'll sit here all day. Now, let me show you what it's going to look like. Let's move this on regular fabric. So I'll just take the purple. Now you can see it goes on completely fine. Okay, matter of fact, a little darker. Look at that beautiful color. Look at that. Look at that when it's dry, but you don't get quite the shine. You're going to have to do another coat on there. Um, but I find that if when I do it on uh, just regular straight fabric, it makes it it makes you use more paint because it's so absorbent. So if I use gesso, which I have a plethora of, um, you know, I have I have gesso. I use sometimes um, uh, what's it called? Uh, gel medium, whatever I have. You know what I mean? Mod Podge, it doesn't matter. Sometimes I'll throw that down as a base. But you can see the difference how this is a little bit more streaky, but the next coat I put on it will be uh, will fill that out. Where this, you can see it's definitely, you know, one coat. And I would put another one on there, but you don't get that quite the shine and the sheen. So that's what I did. But it's totally up to you. And if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of supplies and you want to do it, do it. Don't gesso it. It doesn't matter. Plus, I always say you can use white paint as gesso as well. Um, I know I've gotten a couple comments, nasty comments, about you can't use white I have used white paint as gesso for years and years and years. And yes, I tell you guys, you don't have gesso, but you need to put down a bottom, uh, use white, because that's where you're going to get your truest color of paint on top. It's not going to do anything bad. It's not going to hurt anything. You're using the same white paint as if we're doing mixed media and layering. I don't know what the issue is, um, but I've been doing it for years and it hasn't hurt anything. So whatever, you take it on you and, you know, you do you, boo. I don't know. I'm just saying, I don't, uh, you know, that's just how I do things. And I've taught a lot of people. So I just hate when people are so, you know, closed minded. Like I said, I'm not going to tell you to do anything. Look, I use white school glue all the time. And I tell you guys, white school glue is not archival. Glue sticks are. Elmer's white school glue, not archival. So, you know, use it in your art journals, use it in things that, you know, you're not selling, but do art. That's the whole point. Oh, I just, I just hate when people are sticklers and they, they get on their high horse about prod, uh, using different products. It's like, you don't have to go out and buy golden or Liquitex, which I love, but you don't always have to have all that on hand to do beautiful paintings 
or beautiful art. I just hate that. I love the folk art and look, I've been using folk art for years. Go back on my videos for years and years and years. I've been using it. No big deal. You know, it's not just because I am um, trying to sell plaid. It's that I've been using, using it for years. It's been my favorite for years. What are you going to do? You know, I'm going to use what I have. I can't go out and afford expensive, expensive. Craft paints are good. They're a lot better than they used to be, I tell you. There's not a dang thing. If you can afford the expensive stuff, I'm like, hey, good for you. But it doesn't have to be to get good uh, results. All right, I'm going to let that dry. I can see it really wasn't completely dry underneath. Not going to worry about it. Now I'm going to let it dry all the way. I just love this stuff. Look at that, how gorgeous that's going to look. Do you know how that's going to look up on the wall between the leaves and the bird? And oh, love it. So what are we going to do for a background? Well, I've been thinking about that. And let me put my everything away for now until I can finish it in a bit so I don't spill because my daughter and I were doing something and she spilled powder everywhere of my stuff because she's one of the clumsiest people I know and she doesn't she doesn't know that I you know you got to put those lids on because I spill everything but what can we do as a background well I think doing blues as the sky would be a fantastic background and all you'll do is finish your bird and then you'll take I want to do a light blue first though what do I want to do pearl what do I want to do I don't know Mm, not gray. Not gray. I think I'm going to go in with turquoise first. Well, do I want to do? Yeah, I'm going to go in dark. I'm going to go with it. I'm going to use uh, Ultramarine Blue. I'm going to give it a shake. And I'm going to show you what we're going to do. And again, you don't have to use any. You want to go crazy? And make it a little odd, do pink. Do whatever you want. I'm going to use uh, ultramarine blue. Um, now, you can mix a little gesso in it if you want it a little lighter. And you can see, I did not gesso anything here, right? I did not gesso the outside. Excuse my arm again. I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to tap my brush because I don't want it soaking, soaking wet. I'm going in. And all you will do is paint. And you'll go in, and I would use a smaller brush. I'm just going to leave a little bit of the bird on the outside because I'm going to trace it and outline it with some black paint or something. But you see, that's all you'll do once everything's painted, right? Once you did your leaves or whatever you're doing. This would be the last thing I do. If you are adventurous, Maybe you want to do the background first. Maybe you want to paint everything blue first. Um, and then, you know, put your stencil on top. You can definitely do that too. You can take your gesso, use your gesso, put your stencil down on top of your black, take your gesso, paint it all in, take it off, let it dry, and you're good to go. Nothing wrong with that. But what I'm going to do is take some of my gesso and watch. Maybe you only have dark blue and you don't have uh, a lot of colors. Take white or your gesso. And then you can play around till you get a color that you dig. Add a little bit of water because I think that helps it flow a little better if you don't have like um, a... Uh, I don't want to say flowies, but I don't know what exactly it's called right this second. I cannot think. Because I get so excited over doing these. I'm like, oh, oh, oh. Um, glazing medium. That's what I'm talking about. You know. And look, you can do pat it. Now I'm going to go in right here while this is a little wet. I'm just kind of drag it through. And I'll get a smaller brush, like I said, to really detail that, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. But you definitely can take a paper towel if you want to add some texture. 
because this is how I love doing it. You could put make it a little wetter, you know. Oh God, I could sit here for hours. And just play, play to what you want. Maybe you don't like that, so you go back and you kind of go, yeah, I don't really like it, but I dig this color. It's like a periwinkle, and you let it dry. We'll do, you know, you can do uh, clouds, oh, all kinds of stuff over this. You can make the branch go all the way down to the end if you want. You can um, do other branches off of it. You really can embellish from here, but this is going to be beautiful just the way it is. And I hope I helped you guys with some ideas on what to do. Grab your closest stencil. It doesn't matter if it's a stencil of bricks. It doesn't matter if it's a stencil of, um, I don't know, hearts or flowers. It doesn't matter. Do this. Get a piece. This muslin, you go to your local craft store. You take your coupon with you. You can download it from joanne.com um, or hobbylobby.com. You can buy it online or go to the store and get a half a yard and it'll make like six of these. So it's just so much fun. So much fun. I love being creative this way. I have so many things going on and I'm doing and starting and really I want you guys to be included and I want you guys to be able to do this. It's a lot of fun. You don't need a lot of stuff. You can make it all monochrome by doing black and white and then mixing your black and whites for your grays. Oh, I could go nuts and crazy, but this is what I'm doing right now. I love it. And I'm so excited to show you guys who are not into doing the art doll quilts or, you know, or odd girls or whatever. And yeah, so I'm so excited. So if you guys do this, let me know, tag me. I would love to see what you guys do. I am going to start, um, which I tried starting this before and I really didn't do it as much as I wanted, but I want to start doing where I show if when you guys do as I do, like if you guys do your version of this or the alcohol inks or what, anything that I do, um, I'd like to, you know, kind of, what word, feature you guys in a small video where I just show, I'll have your name and then uh, the item that you did that reflects something that maybe you learned from me. So let me know down below what you guys think of that because I would love to be able to do that. And if you have a YouTube channel, it would definitely be able to, uh, you know, we're giving a shout out to your YouTube channel or just your art and that would be my pleasure because I love seeing what you guys do. All my information is down below. You can find me on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Everything's down below. And if you like this, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And of all, as always, please be kind to each other. You never know what battle somebody else is fighting. If you'd like to be and you're not already, please click that subscribe button down below as well. There's a bell. Click it. You'll get notified when I uh, upload. I know all this now that we have to do, but it is what it is. YouTube has changed so much. Um, and yeah, so that's it. Please share me around like I'm your loose best friend and, uh, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.